Cool. So uh, obviously, I think a lot of people in the audience go, okay, well, we're, you know, my IDE is Emacs. You know, what, 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 you know, yeah. what do I do instead of dragging so and dropping? Yeah, so this is, I'm showing actually right now a, the website called Kanai, kanai.com. This is where we're putting our public API. And so we can start to talk about what that will start to look like. The, the fourth component of SunCloud is this open API. Uh, this is the RESTful API. I'll go into a little detail here for those of you who are interested. Uh, but most importantly, we're making this publicly available today under a Creative Commons license on the Kanai.com site. So any of you who are interested in what this API looks like or want to contribute to our effort, please go to that site, let us know, tell us what's right, tell us what's wrong. Now's the time to speak up and we want the community to be involved as we develop this API going forward. Also, by putting out a Creative Commons license, we're encouraging other people to use the API. And if somebody wants to build a, a, another cloud implementation and take this same API, we think that's great. It just is proliferating the platform and going after this mini clouds model of having them being open and compatible, even if we didn't build every one of them. That's, that's exactly right. We're, we really are encouraging development for this, and that's why we've chosen to put this in the public domain. So before we get into to the API, we should recognize that it's a REST API. I'm sure many of the audience here is familiar with that. We're using the simple HTTP verbs of get, post, put to create resources and to query them uh, easily in a programmatic way, which Kind of interesting also, we have just a single starting point, a single URI that you can, you can address, and from that point on, everything else is discoverable. This makes it very easy to extend the API and makes it also trivial, almost trivial for anybody else who's implementing the API to put their own URL structure behind this API. So it starts with the user's virtual data center. A simple get to the virtual data center for the individual customer will have a uh, representation that's returned by the server here. And as you can see, it's the name of the VDC itself, the URI. But notice this is the beginning of a virtual data center. It has essentially no addresses, no virtual networks in, the, in it, and no volumes. But it has most importantly these URI links. This is how you go and you create resources using REST within this virtual data center. So here we can see create VNet. And, and all the other properties that you want to see here. So to create a virtual machine, all you simply do now is post to the URI that you were provided there. And in this case, we've, we've spawned a MySQL virtual machine. With this machine, now that's part of, we can start to put this into our application. So if we now want to look at this machine after now it's been instantiated, we can inspect this now by doing a get, again, for the URI for this virtual machine. And in here, the response from the server will tell you again now what you can do. So most importantly, if you look at the controller section of this, you can see that for this virtual machine, you can deploy it, you can start it, you can stop it, you could reboot it if you had a problem, and you could hibernate it, meaning that you really would just like it to be quiescent for a while and not be charged. So we think this is a very important way for you to be able to control your applications. Very simply now and quickly, we will be able to, with a single post, be able to deploy the application, we'll be able to start the application, and we'll be able to stop the application, all of, all of which you can actually annotate with a simple note here so that your log files will, will contain the actions here. Lastly, in terms of the API, of course, no, not many people want to write actually out uh, what you're doing in terms of the HTTP itself. You use higher level constructs, and we've got libraries available for, for Ruby, for Java, for Python and PHP. Before I, I leave this topic, I wanted to, to tell people that at 12.30, 12.40 today, there, there'll be a birds of a feather on SunCloud API by Tim Bray and, and Craig McClanahan, who, if you guys could stand up, just so the people who recognize you here, <laughs> the primary authors of this API, uh, they'll be available at the, in room <laughs> six. Um, all complaints, comments go to them, not me. <laughs> so looking forward to meeting you at that time.